Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Happy Friday, everyone. I am in Michigan. I'm in Traverse City, Michigan. I spoke last night at Martinus. It is an organization for business leaders, people in the business world. You can look it up and if you want to be contacted with someone, if you're out in the Traverse City area, let me know. I can certainly connect you. They are amazing people. I was so blessed to speak and share my story and also how leading with compassion is so important in our personal lives and our professional lives. And I want to give you a little pep talk today because I posted a meme yesterday. You know how I love my memes. And so many of you reached out and said, boy, I sure hope this is true. I know the world seems so wrong, so upside down. Remember, that's why I have Reality Reflections as my title and why when you look at the picture of the hand holding the ball, it flips the earth upside down, so to speak. It has the water on the top and the horizon on the bottom, the sky. That's how backwards everything is. Satan makes it seem good to do evil. And many of us who are trying to live virtuous lives, we sometimes feel tired or worn out. I want to read the meme because I think it's appropriate to do so. Let's see. Okay. The devil couldn't take you down. So he is trying to wear you out. Do not dare get tired. Hold on because the tide is about to turn in your favor. You may not feel like that right now. And I have to ask, where are you going for your relief? Where are you going to find that joy that can only come from God? Are you seeking out worldly solutions in the physical world because we know that those don't work or they might work for a fleeting moment. If you are not praying every day and gaining your grace through God, then yeah, every single day is going to be a different spin. You might have a tired, worn out day. I'm telling you, if <laughs> I am tired, I'm so tired. And why? Because I'm taking so much Benadryl. <laughs> I am still breaking out in hives. And lo and behold, I come out here to Traverse City, Michigan, and they're like, oh, yeah, everything's in bloom. And in my mind, I'm thinking, great. So last night I was up for hours because I could not sleep. I could feel the hives coming out. I was itching all over. I was taking so many Benadryl. And that's induced by a drug, right? But I need that. Otherwise, I'd be one big hive, and who knows if my throat would close up. But others may just be spiritually tired, or you're spiritually lazy. And I don't mean to call you out in such a way, But we aren't going to find our joy unless we do what joy says. Jesus first, other second, you last, J-O-Y. 
And when you have that order in your heart and you actually work it through your day, you will find that joy will come. You will start in the morning, for example, say hi to Mary and Jesus, say, Holy Spirit, come. Look around and be grateful. Walk through your house and say, thank you, Lord, for this house. Thank you for my spouse. Thank you for my kids. Thank you for my faith. Think about how many people are walking on this earth in a miserable state, living the worldly life, and not even realizing that they are not happy because they've never found the joy that comes from giving your life to God and being humble every day. I talk about first fruits. It's so important because for me, if I don't start with God, my day is kind of weird. It's, I don't know, I get irritable. I'm more anxious I don't look at people and smile. I don't appreciate the fact that God has given me faith and I know that he's doing what is best for me, whether I be struggling with something or maybe there's a someone who's sick in your family or someone just passed away. As a matter of fact, I just heard last night about this gentleman who passed away in a car accident. It's things like this that should make us stop and think how short life is, and how important it is for us to work out our salvation here with fear and trembling. I'm I'm reading this book. I have to tell you, it's super dry. (laughs) I'm actually listening to it. You know me, I'm an audible chick, but I'm listening to it. And I, it's all about sin and vice versus virtue. And we are called to be just, right? We are called to be virtuous and we have to practice it. But it doesn't just come because we do it on our own will. It comes because God gives us that beautiful grace, fills us with consolation, hopefully fills us with his joy so that we become happy and satisfied with where we are right now. And we trust God because we're here for a reason. Romans 8, 28, I'm not going to say it exactly right, but all things work for the good for those who love God and live his purpose. So while it may seem it's a horrible situation right now, or you're just in a funk and you can't seem to get out, or you're so upset with what is going on in the world and you're taking it on your own shoulders, or you're seeking for stuff, you're seeking for other things, not God. All of these things are teaching moments. If you don't think that because your prayer hasn't been answered, it's because God doesn't want it for you. That is not true. I have had miraculous healings in my life And he's also had me struggle and work through others. You all know temperance is my thing, right? Self-control. It is both a gift from the Holy Spirit, which we cannot earn, and it is a virtue. So we must practice. We must exercise. Oops, my air conditioner just went on in my hotel room. Sorry about that. So ultimately, God is working on you for a reason. And if you're struggling with something, you've got to remember that your only recourse, your only recourse is Mary, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Pray to them all the time. You know I'm doing true devotion to Mary, St. Louis de Montfort. I am learning so much And that is really what I want to say. As we come into kind of the summer months, you might be a mom freaking out that all your kids are going to be home. You might be, you know, everyone just kind of changes in these summer months. And that being said, you may lax on your prayer. You may lax on your 
conversation with Mary and Jesus, I want to encourage you to do the opposite because when we're not growing in prayer and in our relationship with God, meaning we're giving him our time, that is the currency that God wants from us. We need to give him our heart. I know a lot of you have lots of devotions and many of you pray novenas and maybe you're going to, you know, add the chaplet at three o'clock, but that's not what I'm talking about. Do those things. Those are great. I'm not taking anything away from them. But what I am talking about is mental prayer. If you do not pray, you will not be saved. That's not Kendra talking. That's St. Augustine. And let's remember, we are called to be saints. And every single saint prayed mental prayer. Mental prayer is where you meditate on something. The word of God, a crucifix, a rosary can be a mental prayer if you actually meditate on it. And I know darn well, many of us just zip through the rosary to check it off our box. And we are now pagans, just blah, 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 saying a lot of words when we pray like that. I really want you to hear this so that the next time you decide you're going to check the box, you stop and say, wait a minute, Lord, you deserve my time, my currency. This is how I show you. And this is how I want to have you in my life. If you don't have a regular prayer time, please schedule it. Get it first thing in the morning. Why? Because we want to give our first fruits. So let's think about, what do you mean first fruits? Do you remember? I'm sure you do. But Cain and Abel. Cain was over the the vegetation. Abel was over the livestock. And when he gave his offerings to God, he gave the firstborn, the unblemished animals, the good stuff. And Cain just brought whatever was there, gathered up whatever it was and threw it at God. Didn't pick the best pieces. Didn't, you know, have the heart behind it. This is why some of us don't receive grace at mass because we are not in the right disposition. We're thinking about our to-do list. We walk up, we receive the Lord. Boom. We just blocked grace. So that being said, that is why our first fruits are so important. And I know some of you are not morning people. Honestly, your day will change when you pray in the morning. Because then you're going to hear what God puts on your heart. And you're going to start your day with God, not ending your day with God. You know I have a 40-day prayer video thing, right? Check it out. Go to my website. It's 40 days because 40 is a challenging number. And that's about the time it takes to put a habit into your life. It's, it's fine time that we start developing good, prayerful habits. There's no time like the present. So when I heard through three different people about, oh, are you, are you actually going to do the true devotion to Mary? I took that as a sign that God was speaking to these three people. And I chose that moment after I got off a coaching call. It was one of my, one of my clients. She had said, you know, if you start today, you can end on the visitation. And she says, I look at you like Mary, that you just get out there and you're the biggest evangelist and what a great day. And so, you know what? I had no time to do it. I was going to be packing and heading off to Nebraska that following morning. I had a ton of things on my list. But I pulled that book out and I said, all right, I'm going to start today. And there's never a good time. We're always going to be busy. We're always going to have something on our plate. But if you at least give it the effort, God is going to give you consolation and graces. And you're going to be like, how did I live my life any other way? And St. Teresa of Avila says, If you pray mental prayer every day, which means a minimum of 15 minutes, Satan knows that he 
can't take your soul. And then St. Francis de Sales says, if you don't pray mental prayer 15 minutes at a minimum, I would prefer in half an hour for y'all, you will not be able to stop sinning. There's a correlation between the time that we give God and the, and the humility. Because to be honest, everyone, you're real prideful if you are not giving time to God and humbling yourself to have him come into your day and into your heart. Everything comes from the heart. So we need to ask him to purify it and we need to ask the spirit to ignite us on fire. And then we can be joy. And joy is the best net to catch fish. Who doesn't want to hang out with someone who's joyful and smiling and appreciative of all of the stuff that's going on in their life and has the the weirdness, <laughs> the weirdness of saying, it's all okay, God's got this. I remember when I was so in the world and I didn't have anything with God, I would think that those people were freaks. Called them Jesus freaks, right? What do you mean God's got this? You better step up and do something. I was filled with pride. I was my holy trinity, me, myself, and I. So as we approach another season, which I don't know where you are, we went from like winter to summer, spring just kind of didn't come. Let's not be lax. Keep going forward. Deepen your prayer life. Schedule it. Sign up for my prayer course. I come to you every day in a video. And we work on something every day. My video is three minutes long. And then the rest is up to you to sit and contemplate on it for 15 minutes and then think about it the rest of the day. It's going to deepen your Catholic faith. It's also going to put that habit in your life. I'll put the link for my prayer program in here. And I don't care if you do mine. Do something. Even if it's just sitting and talking to God That is where you're going to find your peace. It's where you're going to find that joy and where you will find that zeal for life, where you're not going to give up. Satan loves to mess with us, but guess what? If you actually put in mental prayer in your day, every day, how cool is it that Satan knows he's lost you? Because you are no longer speaking that you love God and, you know, you're a prayerful person, you actually are. We can convince ourselves that we're fine in our journey. And if you're just hanging out and doing the same old, same old, I really want you to reflect because if we're staying the same, we're regressing. We constantly have to be walking toward him. He will draw us nearer. And that is my kick in the butt, my little pep talk for you guys today on this Friday as you go into the weekend so that you can truly think and honestly, truly desire to have the joy of Jesus in your heart. All righty, everyone, I got to get rolling. I'm running late. (laughs) I love you all. Go find something more with God and have a blessed and inspired day.